Hey, what's going on everybody? So I know this is the second video of the day, but I have been moving apartments, so I kind of missed out on two videos last week. So I thought I'd go ahead and make it up here. So in the last video, I taught you guys how to convert a uh, lightweight access point into an autonomous access point. And so now I have the autonomous access point booted up. So let's go ahead and do a basic configuration on this autonomous access point with uh, one VLAN and an open SSID. So let's go ahead and put in the default password that is uh, Cisco with a capital C. And um, let's do a show IP in brief just to see what we have. So right now we have uh, an IP address of 10.02.100 on BVI1. And I think that, that that I set this up right before uh, this video. Uh, let's go ahead and verify. So here, yes, I have this IP address. So that is the IP address of the management interface uh, of this access point. So uh, because we are only using one VLAN, this management VLAN is also going to be the uh, wireless VLAN as well. So just keep that in mind. Uh, in a future video, I'm going to show you guys how to create multiple VLANs on an autonomous AP and utilize uh, multiple SSIDs and associate that to uh, multiple interfaces. So let's go ahead and uh, continue on from the configuration there. So another thing that I'm going to go ahead and show you guys is uh, show run interface FA. 1047. This is a port where my access point is connected to. So here I have the access point connected to a uh, to a trunk port and I have native VLAN 2 as uh, my management VLAN set up uh, as a native VLAN. So that's really all the configuration that I have uh, for that. So let's go ahead and uh, move forward with our configuration. Since we only have one SSID that we want to create, there's no need to do much else other than uh, creating that SSID and assigning it to the radios. So you'll notice that we have two radios, radio 0 and 1. Radio 0 is a 2.4 gigahertz radio and radio 1 is the 5 gigahertz radio. So let's go over to ConfT and let's create a dot eleven SSID and here it's gonna ask for the name. Let's just call it um I don't know, let's say uh let's call it open underscore on this pod one. All right. And so under here, we can go ahead and do a couple of things. Uh, we want to specify the authentication to be open. And also, we want to be sure that we're broadcasting this SSID. And in this case, we would do that by using guest mode. That's to ensure that this SSID broadcasts and clients are able to see it. In most cases, this is what you want. So now that you've created the SSID, now what you have to do is associate that uh, SSID or, and allow it to be used on the different radios. So the radios that we have, interface D, um, so we'll start off with uh, .11 radio 0, and then we'll associate SSID, and I'll go ahead and copy-paste this as to avoid any errors. Um, there and then do a no shutdown on that interface. Then I'll do the same thing for uh, the 5 gigahertz radio. I'll assign it and do a no shutdown. So we'll let it do its thing and let's just make sure that we are able to um, that we are actually seeing those uh, SSIDs. So the way we do that is by doing a show dot uh, dot eleven and then BSSID. And as you can see here, 
we have it broadcasting on both the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz radio. And we have that. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab my iPhone here. Now, I need to get a software in order for you guys to see this. But in the meantime, you all trust me. I'm going to grab my iPhone. And I'm looking at it right now. And I see Open Pod 1. I'm going to go ahead and select it. And here you see that a station has been detected, a new association. And it appears like I have an IP address, and I do. It is in the management uh, IP range, which for me is 10.0.2.21. If I head over here to uh, show uh, .11 associations, You'll see that I have that one association. That's a MAC address, and that's the IP address. I can also uh, do all client. That way I can take a look at all the information on here. This is my iPhone. This is the IP address. If I have a default gateway, there are a default uh, net mask. In this case, I don't, so I, I will fix that right now. Uh, the bridge group one. So this is what we're going to be using because this is our management, our single VLAN. Uh, let's kind of go through this really quick. Um, the state is associated. This is the SSID you're connected to. Zero VLAN because um, it's a native VLAN. Uh, let's just see what else here. Encryption is off. There's no key type at all. The supported data ranges. Uh, so these are the different ranges that are supported, or the different rates, I should say. The signal strength, the uh, signal-to-noise ratio, or SNR. Everything here looks pretty good. It has some more information about uh, whether or not there's input and output. One thing that I want to make sure that I have as well is uh, a default gateway. It appears like I don't, so what I'm going to do is assign a default gateway, and um, I'm not sure if this necessarily affects my client itself, so I'll double check. I'll be sure that, yeah, my client is able to get out to the internet, um, but if I ping from here out to the internet, oh, it, it seems like I like I am able to. Uh, I think it's probably DHCP that's that's allowing me to do that. So, but in any case, if you, you wanted to give a default gateway statically, you could just do IP default gateway and then select the gateway. So in my case, it would be 10.0.2.1. And I could just do that. So that's all for this video. Hopefully you guys found this useful. And uh, if you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. Have a good day and we'll talk later.